What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. It is one day before Independence Day, baby. Hopefully, y'all going to do y'all thing, cook out, eat good, and do and celebrate with y'all families. Um, my name is Chris Drummond. I'm a freelance sports reporter here based in Minnesota. Um, I'm also a casino host and proprietor of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder where I bring individuals to talk about their why, why they do what they do, uh, and get to know them outside of their occupation. My next guest is an award-winning TV journalist. Uh, She has worked in Arkansas. She has worked in Georgia. Uh, She is also working in South Carolina right now, Greenville, South Carolina. She's a graduate of Georgia College and State University. Uh, Her name is Simone Jameson. Uh, We're going to talk to her about her why of journalism and get to know her a little bit. So without any further ado, I introduce to you, Simone. Hello, Simone. How we doing? Hi. Oh my goodness. My apologies. My apologies for being well, I was wondering where you were. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna have to mess. <laughs> no, no, you good. You good. I, I finally got on. Everything is good. I actually uh couldn't get on my computer, so I had to switch it to my phone for okay. whatever reason. So it worked. Nonetheless, we got everything good and we on here. I just want to say thank you for coming on to my work hard, play harder podcast and also uh dealing with me. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um <laughs> I want to ask you how your week is going so far. Yeah, my week is going pretty well. It's it's going pretty well. I'm just um settling in more and more to Greenville. I've been at yep. my new station for uh and I think yeah, it's coming on a couple months now. So, okay. Um, it's exciting. Oh, yes it is. Absolutely. Um I want to reiterate to you why I wanted to bring you on here before I start peppering you with all these questions. Uh, I know you're an award-winning TV journalist um, that's based out of South Carolina, but you've had stops uh, in, I know, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, Albany, if not, if I'm not mistaken with that. Uh, you also been in Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken with that. Um, yes, yes, indeed. And I know you're a graduate of Georgia uh, College and State University, which I graduated at Kennesaw State University, so I know all about Georgia and okay, the colleges okay. out there. No question about that. So you're a person in journalism. I'm a sports reporter based out of Minnesota here. Uh, I love doing journalism. My why is simple. Uh, I love to story tell. I love to talk to people. I love writing stories and creating stories from the ground up and talking to people about uh, what's going on in their lives. I, when you do sports, that's just what you do as far as covering games. And I love that. And I imagine your why is the same. So I wanted to bring you on here to this podcast and talk to you a little bit. So sure. with all that being said, the first question I normally have, Simone, is always the same. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? Did you have any role models growing up? Did you have any inspirations growing up? Uh, what is your why of getting into the journalism field? Hmm. So I would say my why really kind of, it really kind of started to become clear to me as I got older. But uh, as a little kid, I was always fascinated with watching the people on TV, watching the people in the news. Uh, my parents, they're heavy news consumers. So from the time that I would get home from school, from the time I got went to bed, really they had the news on and they w- did the whole switching back and forth between news channels. And yeah. I would watch the anchors, I'd watch the reporters, I'd watch the stories they cover. And I think, man, you know, maybe I can do something like that one day. And then even as a child, I was always naturally curious. I was always asking questions, I was nosy in class, just poking around, <laughs> right, just right. trying to find out more information, was just curious about all kinds of stuff. And uh, and my teacher started to say to me, hmm, have you ever thought about maybe uh, doing something in radio? Because at the time, it, in high schools, when I really started to kind of uh, own my voice. Right. And uh, they asked if I'd considered doing any work on, on radio and they said, mm, well, maybe I can see you on TV because I used to express my interest in, you know, uh, watching the TV personalities. And my teachers would be like, 
we can we can see you doing that and my my parents my parents so yeah well we can see you doing that and so it really started from there and I'll tell you what I had tried a few different well plethora really of Mm. different careers because at one point I wanted thought I wanted to be a teacher at one point I thought I wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> mm-hmm. At one point, I thought I wanted to be a marketing communications a consultant or social media manager. And so uh, coming out of college, I really dabbled in all of those different career paths to, to see, hmm, do I really do I really want to be set on, on journalism? Do I really want to be set on reporting? Is something I really wanted to do? But that passion always kind of came back. And sure, I think absolutely. what really perpetuated that was talking to different people and just being interested in their stories, just being interested in learning more about them, their backstory, uh, really caring about their issues, what they were going through. And if it was something unfair, if it was something unjust, being able to empathize with them and think to myself, what can I do? What can I do to help this person? What can I do to advance their situation? Mm -hmm. And so tying in with my natural curiosity to just know, learn more about the world around me and why things are the way they are and why people act the way they do. Right. And then tying it in with actually wanting to be a voice for the voiceless or kind of speak up for folks who really may have otherwise not had that opportunity. I think just joining those things together is why, is what fueled my passion Sure. for becoming a journalist. So I definitely say it was a kind of whole whirlwind of thing, but I, I feel like it was definitely a bigger idea or a bigger calling than myself. It was just a mission of reaching more people and helping people and impacting the community I'm in. I love it. I do. Um, talk about Georgia College and State University. Uh, I want to know, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to that particular school? Uh, so Georgia College actually they had offered me a scholarship well I got a a hope scholarship actually to go to Georgia College and it stuck out to me it stuck out to my parents because one of my high school teachers had talked about it his daughter went there and I started looking more and more into the school and I found out it was a liberal arts school and they're Mm. really big on emphasizing the importance of uh of collectively a whole learning and studying abroad. And that really stuck out to me. So I actually, believe it or not, Kennesaw State, you said you went to Kennesaw State. So I'd applied to Kennesaw State and was accepted to Kennesaw State. Mm -hmm. I think I only applied to three colleges. I applied to University of West Georgia, uh, Georgia College and State and Kennesaw and was accepted into all three. Uh, But Georgia College was my top pick Mm-hmm. And they came back with an offer and scholarship. And so that really helped seal the deal. No, oh, no question. Anytime somebody going to throw some money at you, that's going to seal the deal. <laughs> There's no question about that. Uh, I, I'm very familiar with West Georgia being, I believe that's in Carrollton, if I'm not mistaken, Carrollton, Georgia. And I think Georgia College is in Milledgeville, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, definitely familiar with those two schools. Uh, no question about it. I actually tried to apply to Georgia State uh, and did not get in. My grades was not the best, Simone. They were not the best. I would tell you that right now. But Kennesaw State did accept me. It's grown so much uh, since my time there. So it's pretty cool. I'm actually uh, pursuing my master's at Kennesaw State University online. So it's cool. Cool. No, no doubt. No doubt. So I want to um, ask you some favorite questions, okay? And based upon these questions, you just give me the 411 and let me know what the answers will be, okay? Sure, sure. Fire away. All right, let's do it. Let's rock with it. Favorite meal you like to cook? Uh, Shrimp Alfredo with garlic bread. Uh, No hesitation on that. Okay, now if I'm ever in Greenville, (laughs) I'm Shrimp Alfredo. Let me let me put the emphasize the jerk. Okay, now. Okay, now if I'm ever in Greenville, I might have to hit Simone up. I like (laughs) you. I put my foot in those. I put my foot in it. Okay, I'm with you on that. Favorite concert you've ever attended? Favorite concert? Ooh. So I've been to, oh, I've been to a few different good ones. Mm -hmm. I would say, 
I, I really liked, and you're probably not expecting this answer, but I'd really liked the new edition uh, concert I was able to go to last year. Uh, okay. Bobby Brown be, reuniting with them. Mm -hmm. um, going over all the favorite classics, Cool It Now. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if it isn't love, absolutely. If it isn't absolutely. love. Right, yes. right, absolutely. Can't you stand the rain? And who don't exactly. know? Exactly. Who don't know <laughs> that? that? Just, Come on. Now. That just takes me back to like '90s me, uh, childhood, where I was just mm -hmm. in the car with my folks, driving to places, and would just start hearing those over the radio, turning the blasting up the speakers. Absolutely. It, to me, a new edition is not complete without Bobby Brown. You got to have Bobby Brown <laughs> yeah. with new edition. No question. Okay. Favorite place you've ever traveled to? Oh, so see, I guess it would be Jamaica. Um, and Jamaica is, it's kind of, it's its home uh, for me. It's home for my family. Both of my parents were bo born and raised in Jamaica. I was okay. there last fall in uh, Negril, in uh, Westmoreland, uh, that area of Jamaica. And it just felt like being home. Um, just all the food and just actually, you know, have being able to um, be around folks that felt like family, uh, really. I love, so. I love that so much. I'm, I'm actually going on a cruise uh, in October with the family. It's my dad and everybody. So um, and we're going to one of the stops is Fairmont, Fairmont, Jamaica or Fairmount, Jamaica. Um, and we're going there. So it'd be my first time ever on a cruise. It'd be my first time ever going to Jamaica. Wow. Uh, so I'm definitely excited about that. Yeah, I'm excited for you. You're going to love it. It's, it's super it. beautiful. Super beautiful. Beaches and the sunsets in Jamaica mm -hmm. are unlike anything you'd see anywhere else in the world. And I've been okay. to Europe. I've been to, you know, other places and just nothing beats Jamaican sunrises or sunsets to me. Maybe I'm just partial. That's okay now. Now you can be that way. <laughs> That's all right. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Favorite restaurant you like to eat at? Favorite restaurant. Hmm. So now I'm a bit of a foodie. So I, know. <laughs> I've tried a lot of places. I like eating at a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. I would have to say Papa Do. Oh, so you, you like a little kick, you like a little kick to your food is what I you do. Doing. I okay. do. Okay. It's, it's Jamaican. Right. I have a Jamaican background, so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. we like it with a with Cajun with spice. Mm -hmm. It's spicy. We don't shy away from that. And so okay. I love Cajun. I love seafood too. It's okay. Not my first love when it comes to well, foods. Most people, like I said in the South, you know, obviously up here in the Midwest, you say something like Papa Do's, they ain't gonna know what you're talking about. But <laughs> I know about Papa Do's, uh, coming from transplanting from Atlanta, Georgia, obviously where I went to Kennesaw State. Yeah, okay, Papa Do's is the move. They 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 got some jumbo shrimp that's out of this world. There's no mm -hmm. question about it. So mm -hmm, oh, yeah. definitely good. Do they have any Papa Do's there in Greenville? You know, I, I don't know. I haven't been able to really explore the area as much as I'd like to yet. But uh, Greenville is a, a foodie town. It's a foodie's dream. So, I've, so I've got to be, I, I plan to make my way around <laughs> in the near future. Yeah, you know, I've only been to uh, Greenville uh, twice and and I went there for work. Um, I was doing security. If you're familiar with the University of South Carolina and the Gamecocks, they had a football game. There. So I was doing security for the football game. So I didn't get a chance to like travel around Greenville. But yeah, I've heard that they got some good barbecue there. Mm -hmm. And I've heard they got some good seafood. So oh, I'm looking sure. forward to coming back. That's for sure. <laughs> um, last good, of the favorites. Yeah, absolutely. Last of the favorites. OK, I'm a sports reporter, so I got to ask you a sports question. It's a two parter. Favorite sport you like to watch on TV. Favorite sport you like to attend in person. It can be It could be the same sport. Could be the same sport. Mm -hmm. So I would say. Favorite sport to watch on TV is basketball. Um, OK. King James. Who doesn't love King James. Who doesn't love watching King James? Yes. <laughs> LeBron, yes. LeBron. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He makes the games, he makes watching the games exciting for me. And the fact that his son will also be uh, playing on his team mm -hmm. um, 
mm-hmm. is is pretty cool uh, to be at the forefront uh, watching that play out on television as well. So I say sure. basketball to watch on TV, and then I I really had a pretty good experience watching baseball in person. And I feel like it's more than just about watching the baseball players. It's more about like an experience like with my friends. Um, When I was in Cincinnati, uh, one of my friends had gotten us, uh, she had tickets uh, for us to sit in the diamond section, the diamond suite. Mm. That's like Mm -hmm. a super fancy, like five star gold suite uh, watching a Cincinnati Reds game. And that just changed the whole experience of the game for me. Uh, being there in person, having access to the suite, having unlimited everything, food, oh, yeah. drinks. <laughs> you talk about you food. To, Ooh, watch this, okay. to watch this game. So mm-hmm. um, I would say, well, that that probably, that like next level to any experience that I'd had in person at any game. So I'm like, baseball, <laughs> if I could have an experience at a, at every game, like I did at the Cincinnati Reds baseball game, sure, I'll be straight. I'll be set for the rest of my life. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no question. Uh, when you get to sit in those special seats and you turn around and you go down in that suite or that tunnel where they got that food at and it's unlimited. <laughs> and the moment I grabbed me a plate, I was like, "Ooh, Lord!" It's, it, my plate looked like I've been at the cookout. If you understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> mine did too. Okay, mine did too. okay. I, okay. I put away like two or three of them. Okay, you and already know. The experience you have after that—that's just not at that level. You just like, mm. yeah, it's a down. Like, mm, you feel all like bougie after. Right. You're just like, mm. If right. I don't get the diamond suite, if I don't have the absolute best, it's it's not the same. I feel you. You go from that to sitting like in a nosebleed for five dollars for six dollars. Yeah, like, no can what? do. No can right? do. I love that though. I love your answer. Absolutely. Baseball, Great American Ballpark is out there in Cincinnati. I've been there before. It's great. It's amazing. Uh basketball is my number one sport. So you already got my heart, Simone. I'm which <laughs> and the Lakers are my team because I grew up in California. So <laughs> Uh, I'm a huge Kobe fan. That's my favorite player of all time. That's really who got me in fifth fourth. So I love that. Um, let's talk about your day to day. I love to talk about your day to day because in journalism, as you know, as I know, we go in every day that we do work and it's never the same. This is not a boring job. You, you do stories differently every single day and you never know what you're going to get. Um, talk about how your process is from day to day, finding stories. What do you do? What's the hours that you work? Because we also don't work business conventional hours, at least most of the ships are not. If you're lucky to get that, then that's pretty, it's pretty cool. But, uh, talk about your day, uh, talk about what you do, uh, and your role. Sure. So I am a morning reporter and mm-hmm. I also anchor. Um, and so, so my shift <laughs> starts at 3 30 and ends at 12 30 and I'm typically waking up at like two in the morning which okay. means I'm typically going to bed at like maybe six or, or seven or maybe eight o'clock um if I can push it and so most of my day is really when I go in I'm prepping for live shots and then I go live for our uh uh five o'clock to about nine o'clock uh, shows and I'm live every half hour. Okay. And then, uh, and then after that, between nine and about 1230, like I take a lunch, but then I'm also planning. I'm also setting up shoots and stuff for the next day. I'm always working ahead. Sure. Uh, so, and my stories, like you'd mentioned, um, every day is a different beast. Every day is a different animal. And sure. you're always, you're always uh, perusing for stories. And whenever, when anyone approaches you with something that uh, a kind of cool backstory or something they experience, you're thinking in the back of your head, hmm, could this be a story? <laughs> could that be a story? Right. right. And so I encourage folks, because I'm I'm pretty experienced in, in the field now. I've, I've had more than six years of experience now. And yep. so when I hear somebody telling me a a nugget or something that I think could be particularly helpful or useful or other people want to hear. I'm like, well, can you, 
would you share your story? This, right. this is a story idea. <laughs> right, right, so, right. <laughs> so I do that. I chat with folks in person. I uh, chat with our, I have pretty good relationships with our local uh, city and county council members, uh, as well as folks from the Chamber of Commerces, some of our school district leaders. Uh, those are my contact folks. And then I'm always like, well, hey, once I do a story with them, I'm like, okay, well, what other story do you think uh, we can tell here that you Absolutely. feel like would be interesting? Yep. And so I just do that. And it just allows me to keep setting up interviews and just working the day ahead. And then the next day it's lather, rinse, repeat, you know, go live for our morning shows, uh, planning the interviews, uh, shoots. Um, we cover uh, Greenville, uh, Spartanburg, Asheville, yep. and Anderson. So we have mm -hmm. a really big coverage area. And so I think for a shoot the other day, uh, we found ourselves in, in Waynesville it was a, an hour and a half drive, but it was for a really, really good story uh, with a firefighter who lost his entire business to a fire. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's always, I mean, you have a structure from day to day, but it's the story's always different. The people are always different. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and not even knowing, you know, and that's not including breaking news. Like I've covered so much breaking news mm -hmm. since I've been here and, you know, to officer involved shootings, to, um, to bridges, uh, partially collapsing, um, wow. just, yeah, uh, <laughs> big stuff. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it's, um, it's been very exciting. It's been very exciting and rewarding. Absolutely. That's why we do what we do. Uh, on here with Simone Jameson, who's a morning reporter based out of Greenville, South Carolina, on my work hard, play harder podcast. I love what you just said, uh, breaking down your day to day, because again, it's never the same. Uh, but at the same time, you do some really rewarding stories. Uh, there's nothing more at least satisfying for me when I'm going to the grocery store or pumping gas and somebody sees me and they say, Oh, you did a great job, sweetheart. You did a great job, my man. Thank you. And I'll be like, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I really do appreciate it. I'm just doing what I love to do. Right. Um, that's the A side. The A side is, it's never going to be a day where it's dull and boring because every day we're producing stories that's, something new. Like you said, breaking news happens and we may have to stay a little bit longer. But there's also a B-side, Simone, and that's really why we like to do this podcast because it explains to people behind the scenes. You just said you got up at 3.30 in the morning. Now, most people oh, are too. I'm getting up at 2 in the morning. I'm going, oh, I'm two. starting my day at 3.30. Oh, you start your day at <laughs> 2 in the morning. So most people uh, are sleeping at that time, number one. And then, <laughs> and then number two, you also, I also want to uh, segue this question is, I want to ask about mental health and work-life balance. You know, 1230 is a great time to get off, but that is also a rough time to wake up. You got to get yourself ready. Do you make up, do all this, that, and the third. I don't really have those kind of problems because I don't have beautiful <laughs> hair. And skin. I don't have beautiful hair and skin like you. I just put some shampoo on there and let it rinse off and we good. And then I'm, I'm going about my day. <laughs> so I want to ask you, how do you balance? Your uh, work-life balance, because you seem like a wonderful woman to be around. I certainly wouldn't mind being around you. And I know you have friends and family there. How do you balance that, but also still maintain good mental health? Because a lot of our colleagues, you know, have experienced burnout, mm -hmm. uh, overworked, and underpaid. And you said you've been in this industry for about six years. Me, combination of Atlanta and Minnesota, five years. Talk about how you don't uh, experience any of those things and how you balance your work life. Yeah, so Chris, I would definitely say um, it's a challenge. It's not been it's not been easy. I feel yeah. like it's gotten easier now that I'm a few years in. But when I first started, I was man, it was rough. I was just wilding. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just like, how am I going to do this? Is th this the right job for me? Because I started off as an MMJ when right. I was in Jonesboro, and I was shooting, writing, editing everything myself and I really don't feel like I had the uh, the amount of guidance and um teaching and practical experience as I would have liked to have at sure. that time sure and so it was taking me so long to shoot right and edit stuff and and my 
producers, they would always get frustrated with me in the beginning. And I, I used to question myself. I used to, in that, at that point in time, I felt like I was really burning out. But I think it's more of a mental game. It's really more of a mind over matter thing. If you keep telling yourself, you, I can do this, I can do this, it gets better. It really does, you know, because the mind, what, what you, you know, it, it, it believes, you know, what you tell it. Absolutely. So um, when you keep telling it. <laughs> right. And so right. I just kept telling myself, it gets better. You know, I'm going to be promoted. Eventually, I'm not going to be a multimedia journalist anymore. I'm not going to be my own photographer anymore. And that right. happened. And so as I kept moving on, it kept getting, uh, the workload got a little harder. But I think my mental uh, capacity to t and toughness mm -hmm. had gotten uh, bigger as well. And so right. that really helped. And that's that really helps me now. And now I'm at a place where I I have my own photographer every single day. I get to anchor. I get to do all these things that I dreamed about doing in my career field. Right. And and it's still having that mental toughness and acuity, uh, that's allowed me to really be disciplined in terms of um I've had in terms of prioritizing stuff, I've had to learn to say no uh, to people or to turn down going to certain places or mm -hmm. going to certain events. If yep. I, if I feel tired or if I don't, if I don't really, you know, feel up to it mentally. And I think really what's been helping me too is being uh, more disciplined in terms of what I put in my body. Like I've been, eating salads and blueberries for like five, six weeks. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so that's really helped with my mental health. And I've been exercising, working with a personal trainer. That has helped. That has really, really helped with um with mental health. And then I have a whole uh, community. I work with um a, a life coach as well too, which okay. uh, has been helping me in terms of, if I have any challenges or stresses or if I feel just down about something or I want to express my feelings, just not in a good place, I'm able to talk to her. And I love so, that. And then I have a pretty big, I have a pretty good community. You know, my mom, sister and I, uh, my family, we're really close. Uh, they live in Atlanta. And so okay. they're only a couple hour drive away and I, I go to oh. see them fairly often. But I would say uh, that's kind of how I balance. And then when I get home uh, for the day, I'm sleeping. Like I'm taking a two hour nap, <laughs> sometimes three. <laughs> no, no, I feel it. Sleep is good. And Sleep then is good. whenever I get up, I'm like, hmm, whatever I have time for today <laughs> before I have to go back to bed to do it, to lather, rinse, repeat for the next day, I'll get it done. But I if it doesn't that. fall in those parameters, then it's probably not going to get done. Right I feel now. <laughs> wow. I love that. No, I love that answer. I do. Um, you, you, it seems like you're very confident right now, like, because you're very confident in, in who you are, what you can do. Right. And I tell a lot of these, um, especially high schoolers, uh, some college, cause I cover high school and college players uh, that play. I tell them, if you want to get into journalism, these are the three things that I mentioned to them before I get to the next question. The first thing is you're going to have to learn that the word no, you're going to hear that a lot more often when it comes to applications than you'll ever hear yes. And don't get discouraged. It's okay because that's just the way that it is. It's going to be like that. But all you need is one yes. And once you get your yes, then you get into the, get your foot in the door. Now you got to prove yourself. But the second thing that I segue to that is, is that when you're in prove it mode, understand what saying yes all the time does, right? You got to understand you, understand what you can take on. Some people love to say that word yes because you're in prove it mode and you want to make sure the company made the right decisions and all this, that, and the third. But understand that the word no is there for a reason too. You got to put some boundaries up because if you don't, um, some organizations and companies will take advantage of that. So you have to really assess your situation. And the last thing I always tell people is, um, especially about, you know, mental health and work-life balance, uh, find some hobbies. Um, I have friends as well. Uh, I have a couple friends here 
but I have some friends in different places. I have a lot of friends in Atlanta. That's for sure. Uh, call them up, talk to them. I don't want to have, have all my friends be on sports all the damn time. <laughs> I like to have some friends that differentiate a little bit because I want to be able to talk about different things. I'm not just a sports person. I love sports to the core, but I'm not just a sports person. I'm sure there's probably some people you don't want to be out with your girlfriends and hanging out and always talking about news stories. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you want to twitch it up just a little bit. No, and talk I decompress about- when I, yeah. Oh, man, I decompress. When I come mm-hmm. home, I'm watching movies. I'm watching cartoons. I'm watching mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. this, that, that, and the third, just to kind of take my mind to a different place, a different Hello. space. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. I've been literally been in, I, I've literally been knee deep in news, like. Right. Right. For the last 10 hours. <laughs> I need to I need to tune out a little bit. Right, <laughs> right. Chart. So, so that's I what it. I try to tell the kids up here for sure. And I tell anybody um that I have on this work hard play harder podcast is that you gotta do those three things for sure. Find something for you. I like to work out as well. Uh, I like to write poetry. I like to go on walks when it's not cold as hell here in Minnesota. Uh <laughs> I like to be able to visit my family. I have an aunt. Uh, uncle and my mother is back in Atlanta still. So I typically like to get out there, visit them, make sure they're okay, make sure they're fine. Um, and just, you know, just be able to do those type of things. Um, I want to know though, uh, if someone, Simone came up to you, right. Uh, maybe an intern, maybe somebody who just graduated or somebody who might be a little seasoned, uh, like myself, been in for a few years. If they came up to you and said, I want to do what you do, Simone, what is, some advice you would give that individual? So advice that I would give any individual wanting to pursue this industry is it, it kind of brings us back full circle to the question you asked me. The first one when mm-hmm. I came on this podcast was what is your why? That's so right. I would ask a person, okay, well, if you think you want to do this, ask yourself, you know, why it is that you want to do this, because you have some folks and I've been approached by folks like this, too, mm-hmm. that say, oh, I I just want to be on TV. Like yep. they're just like, oh, I want to be, you know, mm-hmm. famous or, you know, star or this, that and the third. Uh, they they want the glamour and uh, glory, quote unquote. Right. Uh, but of course, as we know that's that's not a good reason and that's not a sustainable reason. No. So I, I would first encourage the person to um, really dig deep and um, figure out why it is that they want to be a journalist, pursue it for the right reasons. And then I would tell them, start putting yourself out there and just really uh, stay grounded and just don't take no for an answer type thing. Be persistent, mm-hmm. uh, not to the point where you're uh, super, super aggressive, but right. Assertive. I, be, be persistent, mm-hmm. be persistent in, in what you want, be persistent right. in what you think you deserve. You, you de- think you deserve that opportunity. You have a drive and a calling and a passion you feel like to do it. Then don't let anyone tell you differently. Uh, pursue that, and you will get your break. You will get your opportunity. And I would just say, continue to work hard. Continue to work hard and build connections and and contacts, and that'll take you far. But I I, love that. I definitely want to stress the being persistent. That's something that I've had to literally do my entire career. From right. getting people to hunker down on t- interview times, to getting folks to interview with me, to getting uh, news directors to hire me for a job, or to get to be interested in having me on their team. Sure. To get opportunities at every single uh, station that I've been at, being yeah. persistent and really fighting for myself and what I believe I deserve. So I definitely want to hammer home the importance of that. And then, you know, of course you work a talent, you know, you work at, you work hard, you Mm -hmm. uh, keep practicing. And I I think a little bit of it too is um, you learn to to, to develop some, some toughness Mm because you have some people that 
don't say such very nice things about you sometimes. Yep. Absolutely. Hate on no you, question. hate on what you do. Right? No question. <laughs> Absolutely. And that could be hurtful if, if you let those things get to you. It can really break you down because people can be really mean and say some really cruel stuff. But um, I would say all of that to you have all those qualities, you do all those things, you should be golden. Absolutely. Uh, on here again with Simone Jameson, morning reporter based out of South Carolina on my work hard, play harder podcast. I really do love that answer. All your answers have been great so far, but I love that. Uh, being persistent. No question about it. Cause you know, Simone, they see you on TV. They see you giving the four one one. They'd be like, Oh, I want to be on TV. The glitz and glamor, like you talked about, right. Your beautiful face on TV, giving uh, the news and giving the 411 and the community and all this, that, and the third, but they don't know the behind the scenes, what took you to get there. Right? It took you waking up in the morning, early in the morning, working on uh, writing, being an MMJ, where you had to carry your equipment, go out to strange <laughs> places and set up. I'll tell you what, that food, was a whole gym right? workout in itself. When I was MMJ and I was only going to the gym like once a month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. with all the weights I'd be carrying from the camera and all the running around you do. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's a whole understood. cardio. That's a whole <laughs> cardio, right? And understood, right? And now you graduated to that point where you, you got to a um certain market where you get a pro talk. Right now you're anchoring and you're doing those things. But it's through that hard work and persistence of what you talk about. Uh people don't under understand the behind the scenes stuff. Right. They don't understand the behind the scenes of what you go through and what you had to go through to get to where you are. And you're only going to keep ascending through your hard work. Um, another point that you made uh, was people do say cruel things about you. You do have trolls, but that's every stop that we go to. Every stop that you go to, you're going to have somebody either in the workplace or somebody maybe on the street. Somebody send you an email. No. Right. And it is much worse for ladies, in my opinion, because. Y'all get talked about your hair, how you dress, uh, if you're wearing this multiple times in a week, uh, if you're not doing this right, you said this right, you know, this, that, and the third. Me, myself, I've been talked to a, a couple of times. I can, I can tell you one time when I first started, um, I went to a basketball game. I was super excited. It was one of my first basketball games I was covering. I had my laptop, had my camera. Uh, I was looking real, like, media-like. But I'm in a place, Simone, where it's 3% African-American. Mm -hmm. So there's not a whole lot of us here. And it's certainly not a whole lot of African-American reporters. I was the only one. And I was the first one hired. So I went around the corner to get a shot of them warming up. Um, and this man came up to me. He was like, hey, are you that new reporter in town? I said, yes, sir. My name is Christopher Drummond. Uh, I'm a sports reporter here at da 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 and um, it's a pleasure to meet you. He said, I didn't know that the new reporter was black. I was like, wow. Uh, in my mind, I said, wow. And I was like, I was a little furious, of course. You're naturally going to be that in your first instance. But what I said was, was well, yes, sir. Uh, I'm the new reporter. I'm African-American. I'm going to be writing a whole lot more articles here at the publication. I hope you still subscribe and read. And I, and I walked away. But that happened a couple of times because when people see things that are different, um, you know, sometimes it's fearful for the unknown when people see something that's different, that's doing something different. Um, and I had to quickly understand that because coming from Atlanta, I didn't get any of that. <laughs> I didn't get none of that, but you know what I mean? I didn't get none of that. So moving here, I, I had to adjust my, my mentality, my etiquette, grow thick skin. Another thing that you talked about being in this industry, you do have to have some tough skin. You got to have some tough skin. So, <laughs> you um, do. Mm -hmm. No question. No question about it. Um, this is the bonus question that I came up with. You do, yeah, you anchor news and you also report news. But I want to know, what is your mentality about when you have to do a hard news story? Uh, soft stories are great. They make you smile. They make you cry. They make you laugh is great but when you do a hard news story do you take that home with you now being a seasoned mm -hmm. um you know kind of vet in the industry game do you take that home with you or was it harder when you first started oh my gosh 
it was so hard when I first started because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm an empath. Um, mm -hmm. My personality okay. type is the ENFP. So, right. um, so I empathize and I put myself in, in the shoes of, uh, try to, in the shoes of those who are grieving, who have just lost a loved one, who have just uh, lost their house or, or something mm -hmm. else that they love. Right. And when I first became an MMJ and I was telling those types of stories, it used to make me cry. And okay. I would literally be fighting back tears in the interview. And the person I'm interviewing would be like, are you okay? <laughs> and I'd be right. like, I'm, I'm just so touched by your story. Hey, right. <laughs> and Absolutely. Then sometimes I would go home like the really, really tough stories. Sometimes I would just go in my car and just kind of box myself in and and cry mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. let it out. Um, that has gotten exponentially easier. Um, okay. st storytelling, a uh, hard news storytelling uh, for me because now I have the mentality and just in the back of my brain that mm -hmm. even though the story is is super sad. Um, this family has been devastated by this, that, and a third, or whatever the issue is that's sure. uh, super hard news, that there's a greater good in getting it out to the public and letting other people know. So I'm now, right. I'm more focused on, okay, well, this is a bad thing that happened in this person, or this is a bad thing that happened in this area. What can I do What's the solution? What? How can I be a part of the solution? And I feel like my part where I come in is getting that story out. And so Absolutely. I love the, yes. And then, and I love um, sort of bringing up calls to action to like if people, if, if they want to help or if they, if they want to get in contact or if they want to extend a resource um, where they're able to do that, um, kind of connecting the families with that help. So, um, so now that I've put my mental focus in that place, I'm not coming home and crying after <laughs> our new story. It, it lets me kind of think about the goodness that's coming out of the reporting or the attention, the media spotlight that I'm giving to that situation. That's the focusing on the good, I think, is what has helped me to detach and leave uh, stories <laughs> in the studio or in the field when I report it versus bringing it home uh, to my family or um, someone else that's close to me. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think because the fact now that, you know, I got started for me personally, I got started a little bit later. Uh, now that I'm in my thirties, I think my mental capacity is a little different than what I would have probably been in my twenties starting out. Um, I do choose sports and yes, sports is different than news, but we do have hard news stories as well. You know, when kids are crying because their season ended and they're knowing that the team is going to be different, right? Especially the high school kids with the seniors graduating and going off, you see those kids in full blown tears and it's tough because you have to go and talk to them after that. And I also played high school sports, so I, I know how I felt to lose and have a season ended. And you're not going to see your boys anymore. Um, it's very tough to deal with it. But there's also, like you said, there's also a good to being able to get that story out and advocated about and talked about to a community. Right. Um, so and it's 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 a wonderful question to ask because us reporters do have empathy. Uh, we do empathize with people. Uh, I don't think you're human if you don't. <laughs> I think if you, I think if you did not, that'd be crazy. But um, I love asking that question to uh, to reporters as well. Um, we've came to the portion now, this podcast though, that we are now going to do this or that. So Simone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw two things at you, and you get to choose one or the other. Okay, so we're gonna rock with this first one. Now we've been vibing all podcast long. Let's continue to vibe now. All right, so here we go. Okay. Popeyes or KFC? Ooh. I got to go with KFC. Okay, okay. That's okay. Go. Except for, hmm. okay, well, this is all, I've got to be all in one or all in the other then, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm going 
<laughs> you can't take KFC mashed potatoes and then Popeye chicken strips. No, you got to be all for one with into one. <laughs> I'm like, can I get a hodgepodge? <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> um, yeah, I would. I would say KFC. That's that's the place I frequent um, the most in terms of chicken places. I know it's cliche, but. I'm Popeye. I'm Team Popeyes now. <laughs> Atlanta, I'm Team Popeyes over there. But KFC okay. is, is solid. It's solid, but y- you know what it is. Okay, yeah. here we go. Uh, chicken wing flavors: barbecue or lemon pepper? Ooh, I have to go with barbecue. I love okay. barbecue. I love barbecue everything. I put barbecue on anything, and I'll eat it. <laughs> right, hello, I'm with you on that, girl. I'm with you on that. All right, so. With that being said, do you like it wet or dry? Your wings. Oh, wet. Okay. And do you like your wings bone in? Do you like your wings bone in or boneless? Bone in. Ooh, you like to get messy with your wings. (laughs) I'm I'm there. You catch me at a restaurant. I'm I'm licking all fingers. I feel that. All the fingers. Oh, well, Simone, you be a perfect date. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> That's what's up now. I like that. I like that. I can appreciate that. Now. I can appreciate that. Okay, next question. Uh, These next questions have to do with music concerts you'd rather attend. Okay, so here we go. Next four. Which concert would you rather go to? Would you rather see Brandy or Monica? Oh, wow. That's tough. You know, I asked a tough one, Simone. <laughs> I would say I'd rather see Monica. Okay. She has more more hits that I like. But Brandy's Ooh. Brandy's my girl too. Like she, oh man, she's she's brought out some bangers. But I would say uh I would say Monica. I, I vibe with a lot more of her music, I think. Yeah, that's the ATL in you. ATL and her too. <laughs> from Atlanta. That's, that's so I true. feel that. I feel that. Okay, here we go. Kendrick Lamar or Drake. Ooh, I'm going to go with Kendrick. Mm. I just like his flow. I like his style. I like what he raps about. Okay. He's so he's got that like like swag, but it's like like and then that like he's confident but he's not like overly confident. If if that makes sense, he just has this mm-hmm. like smoothness about him. He does. And I feel no like great and this like edginess about him too that's kind of really like his unique personal style. I feel like Drake is more commercialized. Like he's more like carbon copy, like pushed. I don't know. He's just more commercial to me. No, you feel that. I feel that. I'm with you on that. Kendrick Lamar all the way. I do like Drake, <laughs> but I would choose Kendrick Lamar. That's just me. <laughs> okay. Which artist would you rather go see? J. Cole or Lil Wayne? Oh. I love me some J. Cole. Mm-hmm. I love me some J. Cole. I would have to say J. Cole. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love I love Lil Wayne too, but J. Cole just has a smoother uh style to me. And I like what he raps about too. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Um now you know they got that Dreamville uh festival. He holds a Dreamville festival, I believe, in North Carolina. He does. Oh, do you know about that? Okay. I do. I do. I had a friend that went there. I think whenever it happened last year, she went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prior to me coming up here, uh, I, I went to that. So yeah, it was it was it was nice. If you ever get a chance to go, Simone, definitely go. Nice. <laughs> I'll put it on my to do list for sure. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Last one of the music. Which artist would you rather listen to? Now this one may be a little hard, but would you rather listen to Mariah Carey? Or Mary J. Blige. Hmm. I would say Mariah Carey. Mm. That, I that was classic, not- like Vision of Love, mm-hmm. um, Butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like going back to like eighties, nineties, Mariah. I'm. I'm. Um, <laughs> just her super passionate love songs and her range. To me, her range. It's definitely Team different than Mary. Paris. No question. No question about that. I'm, I'm gonna have to be Team Mary, but it's fifty one forty nine. It's really <laughs> close. Uh, that that I can't be without you. Uh, that's a banger. That no more drama. That's a banger. That uh, you're all I need with Method Man. That's a banger. Uh, the one. What's the joint she did with the uh, the waiting exhale? 
I'm not gonna cry. Not gonna cry. That oh, was a man. banger. That was a banger. You uh, making you know, me reconsider my decision. <laughs> you had to bring all that up. <laughs> I did. I did, man. She she a banger now. She is. Both of them is now, but I just had to do that. Okay, here we go. Which sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? I'm going to go with bowling. I don't really know a whole lot about badminton. Okay. Now, are you a good bowler? So I used to be trash, but I think I've gotten I've gotten a little bit better <laughs> in recent years. Okay. And so uh, yeah, and I went out to a um we had a bowling competition a few of uh folks at, at church, and I ended up winning. So I came from behind and beat everybody. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. Now, so that really now. had me feeling myself. It had me flexing like. Mm. Okay, so hold on I'm now. We talking, about, we talking about church folks, though. We talking about the the church folks. You know, they might have been like, "Look here, we need to get Simone a bone. Uh, <laughs> we just gonna let her win that thing." You know, we, we that that might have been church folks. You know, it might be some you know some people that's a little bit older. Is what I'm saying. Even if that's the case, even still, that that boost that set my confidence way way up. I'm like, I can play bowl, bowl anywhere. I can bowl with the best of them. Okay, I, I, listen. When, when in Greenville, I'm about to test that theory, Simone. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm gonna throw that out there. So and without the little, without the little uh, rails too. I, I, I was did, just I about that. Little star, was, star rails, the the gutter, mm -hmm. uh, okay. gutter wall preventers either. So I was. I really was just about to ask that too, because I'm like, okay, is she bowling with the the uh, bumpers? That's what we call. <laughs> okay, so you good? You good? Okay, here we go. Football or uh, basketball? <laughs> to play? No, to to play or watch football or basketball. Okay. Mm. I would say to play basketball because a uh, fast fact: I used to play basketball. Okay. I um I played basketball. Yeah, I played um junior varsity uh, basketball. Okay. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Which sport? Which sport would you rather watch, baseball or hockey? Oh, baseball. Okay. Do you like desserts? I love desserts. Okay, so I'm gonna throw four different categories of desserts out there to you. I need you to choose one of these that you'll never eat again. Okay, so here we go. The first one is cookies, any type of cookie. The next one is ice cream. The third one is cake. That's any type of cake. The last one is candy, all types of candy. So, which one are you getting rid of that you'll never eat again? Oh, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. ain't fair. I know, I know, but you know that. <laughs> but girl, you know the slogan. The slogan is "Life's not fair." That's what it is. We got to choose one of these to get rid of. Now, talk to me. Okay, so i have to get rid of either cookies ice cream candy mm -hmm. or what was the last one cake cake does that include cheesecake all cake <laughs> okay um see, see that's the reporter and you trying to look for a caveat yes all cheesecake <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay. I don't yeah. know if I could cut out if I could ever live my life without having another cheesecake. Uh, I don't know where I would be. Okay. So, um, I would probably I'd cut out candy. So would I. I. I actually agree with you. I agree with you because I don't know if I can live my life without red velvet cake. I don't think I can. That's my absolute favorite red velvet cake. Okay. I okay, I'm with you on that. So we. we we vibing. I like that. So here's the next one. Do you like potato chips? I love potato chips. Okay. This is the same format. So you got to get rid of one of these brands that I'm about to throw out at you that you could never eat again. Okay. So the first one is Doritos. The second one is Lay's. The third one is Ruffles. The last one is Pringles. Which one are you getting rid of? Mm. Pringles, Ruffles, Lay's, and Doritos. 
I'd have to RIP Doritos. <laughs> I, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I say bye bye to Doritos. Come on, I come love. On. I don't know. I love me some Pringles. That so was do I. Choice to you. So that do was I. Wrong choice to you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the wrong choice. Yeah, that was the wrong choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Um, I would have got rid of Lay's for me. Oh, <laughs> for sure. Now I don't know. I love I. I love my chips and dip, and I think that's why I couldn't. That's why I'm like, mm, with the Doritos, because you don't right. dip Doritos. You just eat them by themselves. But you do, you do. With the Lay's now, Pringles and the the Ruffles, you know, having them with like a French onion dip or like a uh, buffalo chicken dip for me. Ranch dip, yes. That's buffalo why I couldn't part with those. <laughs> I feel you on that. I feel you. Okay, so. Uh, let, let me ask you this before um, I go to the next one. Do you like salt and vinegar chips? Oh, no. Okay, good. Well, we we really <laughs> buy it now because those are nasty chips ever. But I also, I also need to ask this because I couldn't go with this brand, which is Cheetos. Something tells me you like flaming hot Cheetos. Oh Something tells me. I was like, if he's going. <laughs> When you named off the chips, I was just like, "Oh, he gonna say Cheetos." I know he's nope. just gonna. I know he's gonna say Cheetos. No, <laughs> and the, and the I reason why I did not because they only exactly. Cheetos. <laughs> They're cheesy. They're cheesy. That's all you can have is cheesy Cheetos. There's puffs. There's crunchy. There's flaming hot. There's the little lemon lime ones, but. The fact is, they're all cheese. <laughs> so they're pretty much the same thing. That's why I didn't uh, add them. The other ones have variety of chips, of flavors. <laughs> I like that. Who doesn't like cool. cheese? cheese uh, che Cheetos is actually my favorite. Um, right. Like Mine, too. Mine too. Absolutely. Well, hold on. Second. Second favorite. Because my, my favorite is the Ruffles sour, uh, cheddar, sour cream and onion. Cheddar, sour cream and onion. That's my that's favorite. Good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Absolutely. Now, my net you did pretty good with this or that, by the way. My next question has to do with um uh, if Simone wasn't involved in journalism or communications at all, what other career choice would she have chosen and why? So you know, I always kind of wanted to be if I wasn't a journalist. Mm -hmm. I think I would have to be something in like the crime scene investigation arena. Like I would want to be a forensic a pathologist. I would want to be out there helping to solve crimes, helping to solve mysteries, um, putting clues, putting pieces uh, together to really help get justice for families. Yeah. I think that's what I would be doing. Because at one point in time, I thought, you know, maybe I want to be a teacher. And then I was a substitute teacher. And I was like, okay, that kind of changed my <laughs> outlook and experience with, with teaching. I was like, mm, maybe that's, that's not as much for me as I thought it would be. Right. So right. Um, aside from journalism, definitely like your CSI, um, ID uh, type of work. It's always I'm fascinating. Good. Me. I feel that. Um, I, too, uh, was a substitute teacher out here. I actually got my license for three years to substitute teach. And then when I went into the classroom, I was like, I love those little bunches of kids. I really do. But when they wipe their noses and they do that, and it's not like, oh, boy, and they smacking hands. I was like, oh, man, I'm a substitute teacher. I can't be sick. <laughs> I'm talking, I love you guys, but I don't know about that. Then the older kids want to talk back to you. I'm like, I only have a certain amount of patience. Uh, with you guys, um, a substitute teacher might not be for me, but still in all, if I ever want to go back and do it, I have two more years to do it. So that there you have it. Um, what is some advice that someone has gave you, uh, that you hold on dearly to? Hmm, some advice that I hold on dearly to. Mm -hmm. So it's one of my mentors first starting out in journalism it was just like be hungry be hungry mm. never lose your appetite never lose your appetite for telling stories um for putting yourself out there for um positioning yourself for 
more opportunities for greatness. Um, never stop being hungry. Always have an appetite for more. Always have an appetite for success. And that's that's really stuck with me really ever since she said that to me. But especially being a journalist, never stop being hungry for uh for curiosity, um, for getting more out of out of life, out of your profession, just really I like it. so. I would say that's probably single-handedly the best piece of advice that I've received. And I've really taken it and kind of ran with it, I feel like. And that's really helped me a lot. Yes, you have. No question. Um, (laughs) And you are doing an amazing job. Amazing. Um, Is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't discussed as far as maybe your role, uh, maybe some upcoming stories you have, or maybe we didn't discuss uh, on this podcast episode before we conclude. Well, Chris, I think I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And um, I think you you did a good job throwing me some curveballs too. I wasn't expecting, but this has been mm-hmm. fun. And yeah, no, I think I'm all, I'm all good. I'm, on my end, I think you touched on a lot of important uh, points. It's especially with um, being a minority too in um, in journalism, how much mental health really matters um, it does. because you've got you face a myriad of a myriad of challenges, you yep. know, from uh, discrimination to mm-hmm. um, you know me being a woman, sexism, yep. to um, to then being <laughs> being prejudiced against because you you're a journalist you know yep. there was remember the whole I don't know if you experienced this um back a few years ago with the whole fake news type thing sure. when that was a wave of, of popularity sure. <laughs> yep. you're in the height of that culture and it mm. wasn't particularly fun uh going out to stories uh by myself as an MMJ Right. And folks asking, well, is this a real story or is this a fake story? And I'm like, sir, I'm just trying to, to tell do my a job. story. Right. <laughs> I'm just trying to do a job. So right. um, just dealing with all of that, I would just uh, want to reemphasize again the importance of uh, anyone in this industry just really making their mental health a priority and yes. really making their own um, peace and um, safe space, uh, safety even, a priority. I'd had situations in my career where I've been put in some pretty unsafe uh, situations. Circumstances, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate um, because, you know, you would think the company that you're at uh, the first thing they have in mind is the safety of all the reporters of it's all their workers there in the building. Uh, but we know being in this industry, uh, especially being minority in this industry, um, that the bottom line sometimes supersedes that, uh, supersedes people's mental health. It supersedes people's safety because they're only caring about what the actual output is instead of what the actual person and worker is at some of these stations. So, it's a beautiful thing when you do link up with a station that actually does put your mental health and your safety first and has your back and be able to let you be creative and free and do what you want to do. But these are also business decisions you need to keep in the back of your mind. Uh, you mm-hmm. definitely need to think about these things, right? Not just talking from a minority standpoint, it's everybody. Everybody that's involved in journalism really needs to keep this in the back of their mind. If this is something that you want to do, you got to have tough tough skin. You got to be able to have difficult conversations with individuals. A lot of people don't like having difficult conversations, but I totally don't mind because you need to have them. It's a must. Um, It's not to be super disrespectful. It's not to be demeaning. It's not to, not to, uh, uh, not to listen to what your bosses are not trying to tell you or the hierarchies, but you have to pull people to the side because everybody deals with things differently. So I love that. I love that you touched upon that mental health. I love that you touched upon that safety. Um, 
I'll be at NABJ this year in Chicago, uh, which is coming up late July. Um, or will you be there? I uh, maybe not this time around because I'm still getting settled into the Greenville mm -hmm. Spartanburg area, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely making plans uh, in years, upcoming years. So. Yeah, uh, I think I think in the uh, next couple of years, it's going to be in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not sure if it's 25 or 26, but I do know uh, um, NABJ is hosting Atlanta. There's no question I'll be at that. <laughs> That's on base. That for sure, I will be at that one. So um, but I will be there this year doing my thing. It'll be my first time. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I also uh, want to say I thank you for your time. Simone, you are an absolutely wonderful person to talk to. And it's been great hearing your story and how you came up, your why, and everything that you do. And I'm a new fan of yours. I want you to take care. Have a happy 4th of July. And uh, we will definitely be in touch. Thank you, Chris. All right. All the same to you. Thank you. Appreciate Have a good night. it. Thanks. Bye.